around a thousand killed, at least 6,000 injured, and even more still missing. Egypt's people have paid a high price to live in a new country. But despite all the sacrifices, the shadow of the old regime still looms large. During Mubarak, 30 years of Mubarak's rule, the estimated number of people tried in under military tribunals were 1 to 2,000. Now, you know, within about 10 months or 11 months, we have uh, 12,000, which is, of course, a humongous number. For a country ruled by the military, the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces, or SCAF, that's no surprise. But surprisingly enough, those the SCAF took over from, who'd previously run the country, are not themselves before military tribunals. You cannot have for uh, suspected killers as, as such, Mubarak and Dil Adli and others, uh, and uh, to be tried in civil court system. And, uh, you know, the ordinary people, I mean, being tried in uh, military courts. Uh, this is unfair in a simple way, and this is illegal. Hasty, with no proper investigation, usually with no lawyer and behind closed doors, and with no right of appeal. Human rights activists complain military trials provide no justice and violate human rights. You know, you have a 19-year-old getting a 25-year-old sent year sentence because he had a box of Molotov cocktails, and people who were found guilty of killing somebody by brutally beating him up and torturing him until he died, these are getting seven years in jail. So, I mean, it, they're obviously, you know, there's something wrong with this picture. A lot of these people are tried for absolutely no reason. I mean, some would just, just being in the wrong place at the wrong time is enough to get you in trouble. That's exactly what Ahmed says is his case. September, the time, the Israeli embassy in Cairo, the place. The young screenplay writer was present at clashes between the army and demonstrators and began helping the injured. Arrested, he was brought to a military barracks. After a summary trial, which lasted just 20 minutes, he was taken straight to prison to serve almost four months for terrorism. He says the military dishes out very rough justice. Imagine a 70-year-old who's been in the army for at least 30 years. It must be hard for him to take off his uniform and this lifestyle, and this was the only way they know how to deal with problems. For several days, Wafa didn't know her son's whereabouts. When his sister came to me and said, I have to talk to you, I knew it was about him. Hoping for the best, I prepared myself for the worst. A month after Ahmed was released, he now faces yet another trial from the same incident at the Israeli embassy. Their goal is to intimidate people. The message is clear. If you go to Tahrir, you'll be arrested. And it makes us even stronger. How is it they don't understand that? Ahmed is now working on a book he wants to title, You Must Shut Up. He explains, if people didn't give up after being bitten and humiliated, they'll never give up until their voices are heard. The citadel in Cairo, Egypt, a medieval symbol of power and strength. It was fortified centuries ago to protect the regent from his enemies, at that time crusades and crusaders. Today, Egypt's rulers are doing the same, striving to defend themselves and to keep power. With thousands in jails and dozens killed, the concern here is that they may have been working too hard. Marif Noshnati, Cairo.